In this video I'll show how to reprogram the flash on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Now you can do this by hooking a few wires up to it, but in my case I developed a little programming jig for this. Uh, it's a pretty simple board. Uh, the wiring is pretty simple, a little messy, but simple. And basically the board consists of a 4x2 socket that holds onto the ESP8266 module, a connector for my FTDI serial to USB cable, a couple of pull-up resistors here for the chip select and the reset uh, inputs to the module so that it stays active, and then a couple of push buttons, a uh, reset push button which pulls the reset pin down to ground, and this prog button over here that pulls the GPIO zero pin of the module to ground and to put the module into the flash programming mode you would hold the program pin down, uh, button down and then pop the reset and after that the modules in the programming mode so let's go ahead and use this to reprogram the flash insert the module into the jig and I have my FTDI cable here. I have to attach the leads on that. And I've got them color coded so that I can remember a couple of days from now how these actually connect. Now I just have to connect that to the USB. And now it's ready for uh, programming. I'll hold down the program button, pop the reset, let go of the program, and now it's ready to have the flash reprogrammed. Now I will start the flasher program. That's this ESP8266 flasher.exe. And that comes up and I'll select the binary file that I want to program into the chip and that's this one right here and now it's ready ready to go I'll change the COM port to COM port 6 because that's where my FTDI cable is located that and then I just press the download button and it will proceed to download into the flash and this will take about a minute Okay, it looks like the flash programming is done. There's a message at the end that says fail to leave flash mode. That's probably because the program doesn't have any way to control whether the ESP8266 module is, is in or out of the flash mode. So it, since you can't get access to it, it, it complains about that. But it doesn't really mean anything in this case. The flash has been reprogrammed with that binary file. So now I can close this program out. Now I'm going to bring up a terminal program, PuTTY, and use that to talk to the board. This isn't entirely necessary, but I just want to talk to the board a little and verify that uh, the binary file has been changed. Select this and change the speed to 9600 bits per second because the new firmware that I loaded in starts off with that default speed and I'm going to change that back to 115 kilobaud but uh, right now that's not in effect so I'll open a terminal window and there's that and now I'm going to hit the reset button on the module module to bring it back into user mode and it gives me back a prompt like that and now I can go ahead and try a few commands Okay, that's the reset command, and you can see that it puts out what looks like a little garbage here. That's actually information that it's printing out from the reset, but that comes out at 115 kilobaud, 
and then the system drops back down into 9600 baud rate mode and then you can see the the final system prompt here so it does look like the reset command has worked let's check the firmware and at the end of every command I have to hit control M control J GMR. there and the control M control J I'm not sure why it needs that instead of just like instead of just hitting the enter key on the keyboard but that's seems to be some other function of the of the new firmware but we can see that the uh, firmware version has been changed to the to this version now it usually has uh, a 160 version number but this is all the way up to 180 so the firmware has been has been changed and what I want to do now is change the baud rate to uh, 115 kilobaud so that uh, my uh, Zipuino program later on will work with that. So I'll change that 115 200 like that. Okay, and now I will verify that that has. Well, now you can see that it's not working anymore because now the board is uh, is transmitting at 115 kilobaud but my terminal set up for 9600 so now I have to change the terminal speed change settings change that to 115 200 okay now okay now it's communicating again. Let's check the baud rate. And it has been upped to 115 kilobaud. And that's really all I need to do with this right now, uh, with this putty window, so I can go ahead and close this out. What I'm going to do now is actually install the module into my Zupuina setup and actually use it to access the web page make sure it still works so I can take it out of the programming jig and I have this little stick it module that prototyping module that I built up and it takes the ESP8266 and puts it into a PMOD connection over here that I can then insert into one of my stick it boards so it just goes in there like that and then I have to put the FPGA board in there that houses a Zupuino processor so that plugs in right there like that and then I have to hook that up to a USB port to give it power and communications. Okay. Now I'm going to bring up my Zipuino IDE. And I've already loaded it with my program that will communicate through the ESP8266 and grab the um, a web page out, out uh, that's stored on the excess website so I'm going to program send this program into the Zipuino on the, the FPGA and I just click the upload button there to do that and now the programming has completed so that program is now into the FPGA's flash and what I have to do now is reset the FPGA so that that program takes effect so I just click the reset button on the stick it board and now I don't need the Zipuino environment anymore so I can pull up a putty terminal again and in this case I'm going to talk to the Zipuino and I've got
got this big window out here and all I have to do is hit a single character and the program will take off and access the website. So it's issuing the commands that it needs, it's linking up and it didn't link. I'm going to go ahead and reset the processor. Run at the end. Wi-Fi connection has been established. There it goes. Now it's actually pulled up the web page and printed it out, and all that's in that web page is just this big uh, text screen that I've that I put in there, just an image of the company logo, because you can never get enough branding. But it did. Uh, the the Zuprino was able to use the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module to talk over the wireless internet and go out and access that website and pull that data down. So that shows that the new software, the new firmware that was loaded into the ESP8266 is operating correctly. And that's all I wanted to demonstrate. So that's how you go ahead and update the software, or update the firmware in your ESP8266 module. And hopefully that'll clear up any confusions that anybody else has about how to perform that.